the second golden age of microbiology. The years between 1943 and 1970 constitute the second golden age of microbiology. The 1940s introduced the field of molecular genetics to general biology. Before 1940s, Biologists used to think that protein was the hereditary material of bacteria. After several scientists studied genes and their functions in the 1940s, in 1953 sufficient evidence existed to state that DNA is the hereditary material of bacteria. With the advent of the electron microscope, during this second golden age, two cell types eukaryotic and prokaryotic cell types were identified as well. Also, after the discovery of penicillin by Fleming and of other antibiotics by other scientists, there was a mass production of antibiotics needed for those wounded during World War II. Let's look at each one of these events in detail. In 1943, Italian microbiologist Salvador Luria and German physicist Max Dulbruck worked on the genetics of the bacteria E. coli. They wanted to know if mutations occur spontaneously or if the environment induces them. A mutation is a change in the DNA sequence or trait which can be transmitted to subsequent generations. They concluded from their experiments that bacterial cells could develop spontaneous mutations and that those mutations could give rise to resistance of bacterial cells to viral infections. The use of E. coli by these scientists to study microbial genetics opened the way for the use of microorganisms as model systems for studying many principles of biology. In 1941, Americans George Beadle and Edward Tatum used the fungus named Neurospora to demonstrate that each gene is responsible for producing a single enzyme. This is also known as the one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. In 1944, Oswald Avery, Colin MacLeod and Mac Clean McCarthy used the bacteria Streptococcus pneumoniae to suggest that deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA is the genetic material in cells. Then in 1953, American biochemist Alfred Hirschley and geneticist Martha Chase used a virus that infects bacteria known as a bacteriophage to provide irrefutable evidence that DNA is in fact the genetic material. Although the first electron microscope was invented in 1931, it was further developed in the 1940s. The electron microscope can amplify objects and cells thousands of times more than the light microscope. With the help of the electron microscope, bacterial cells were shown, shown to be cellular in nature, similar to plant and animal cells, although some differences were found. The main difference was that in animal cells, plant cells, fungi and protista, the genetic material is enclosed within a nucleus and is surrounded by a nuclear membrane. For this reason, these cells are known as eukaryotic, eu meaning true and carrion meaning nucleus. On the other hand, bacteria and archaea cells lack a nucleus. Therefore, the DNA which is part of the physical chromosome is not surrounded by a membrane. These cells are known as prokaryotes, pro meaning before and carry on meaning nucleus.
In other words, evolutionarily, these cells existed before the eukaryotic cells. Now, viruses, on the other hand, lack a cellular organization and therefore they are not considered as cells. We shall study viruses in more detail at a later point in time. As you may recall from our study of disease treatment, Paul Ehrlich in 1910 discovered salvarsan, an arsenic-based compound, to treat syphilis. The agent of chemotherapy, the age, I'm sorry, of chemotherapy had begun. In 1929, Alexander Fleming, a Scottish scientist, noticed that a particular type of mold a species of the genus Penicillium, known as Penicillium notatum, had grown over his culture of bacteria as shown over here. This bacteria that he used was Staphylococci. If it were not for the fact that there was no bacterial growth in the area surrounding the mold, over here he concluded that the mole destroyed the bacterial cells but his discovery of the antibiotic would have gone unnoticed so because there was no growth around the mold he concluded that the mold destroyed the bacterial cells he named the antimicrobial penicillin and developed an assay for its production. However, it was only in the 1940s during World War II that there was a need for mass production of antibiotics. Howard Florey and Ernest Chain were able to purify penicillin and carry out clinical trials to show that the antimicrobial agent had its potency as a drug. Other antibiotics were discovered as well. Prontosil was discovered by, by Gerhard Dogmack and was shown to be effective against bacterial species such as Streptococcus and Staphylococcus. Salman Waxman discovered the antibiotics actinomycin and streptomycin which are soil bacteria. By definition, antibiotics are antimicrobial substances produced naturally by mold or bacterial species that either inhibit growth or kill other microorganisms. By 1950s, antibiotics were well established in medical practices, so much so that the medical and layperson both began to wonder could this be the end of the age of infectious diseases? In the 1960s, interest in the study of microbes was fading away. At the same time, there was an increasing evidence showing that certain bacterial species were becoming resistant to antibiotics. In 